So we're going to make things a little bit different today, which is why I switched over to Zoom. I'm going to be going over some new stuff, but I'm also going to be asking you to participate sort of like we're in a classroom. When we get to some review questions from the last class, what I'm going to ask you to do is to go ahead and work on those questions. You get a few minutes to do that. And then when you have your answer, if you could send me a message by text of what your answer is, but not as a broadcast in entire room, I'm going to ask you to private message so I can, so nobody else can see your answer. And then we'll talk about those answers afterwards. Okay. okay. Hopefully everybody um, understands what I'm saying. So with Zoom, as opposed to Google Meet, which is why I switched over, you can send just me a message rather than the whole room. So make sure that's what you're doing when you put the answers in in a few minutes. Okay. All right. So let's get going. We're essentially looking at vector properties today. And we're going to understand how a lot of these properties are very similar to what you've been accustomed to in algebra. In fact, by the end of today's class, you're going to be wondering whether there's any real difference between properties that you associate with algebra and properties that you associate with vectors. And in many cases, really, there aren't. As long as you understand how to do basic algebra, you should be able to understand how to apply that to the properties of vectors. So let's get started. Now, like I said, we're going to start by actually getting you to go over some stuff from the previous class. Okay. Here are the questions. I'm going to ask you now to do both of these two questions. It says determine the single positive vector that's the resultant of, and you can see them on the screen. I'm going to wait a few minutes to get everybody who is in the room to put their answers in, but privately. So nobody else can see your answers. Please go ahead now. Let me put the answer down. And what I'm going to do is just talk a little bit about, now I'm going to go through the entire thing like we did the last time because you can always go back and look at the video again. But the answer is in fact AE. And somebody had it the other way, as in EA. Remember that vector's direction is unique. So it means that the AE vector and the EA vector aren't the same. So on the right track, but not quite the same. So you might have to look at what you did again, just to make sure that you got all the steps right. But that takes care of the first question. The answer is in fact AE. And the second question is in fact PT. So yes, quite a few of you got that one right. Perfect. All right, we're going to do another question which relates to stuff that we did on Friday. Okay. So here comes question number two. And again, I'm looking for everybody to put their answers in privately. And once I get a couple of answers in, then we'll talk about what the actual answer is. Okay, so here comes the second question. You can read that for yourself. You don't need me to walk you through it. They're looking for, or I'm looking for two answers. And it does say that the answers need to be to a particular rounding. So the magnitude to one decimal place and the direction to the nearest degree. And it does say that there is a choice. You can choose. Do you want to give the answer relative for the direction that is relative to X or relative to Y? That's a choice that you can make. So let me wait for answers for that one. This is directly related to what we did on Friday. So let's go. I'm going to show you what the answer is. I, I know that there are some people who got it everything right and some people got it kind of right. I'm going to show the answers and you, you're going to want to review something like this because you will need to be able to do this on your own. All right. So here are the answers, right? First of all, that was the magnitude. And I think everybody who submitted the answer did get that. And then these are the directions and it, it is very specific. So it's either one or the other. But you can't have with where you say, for instance, it's 20 degrees from X because that wouldn't be quite right or 10 degrees from Y. It's actually 10 from X or 20 from Y. So that's really what the answer should have been. And of course, you can go back and review the stuff we did on Friday if you're not exactly sure how to, how to get those done. Let's move on. All right, that's just the sort of review section of today's class. Let's get to the new stuff. And you're going to find that the stuff we're going to do today is actually very straightforward. If you can do basic algebra, you can do what we're going to do today. So 
I'm going to first of all demonstrate using this little movie, which I'm about to show you, this little graphic, that when you add vectors together, the order in which you add them, something we've actually said before, the order in which you add them does not matter. All right? You get the same result. So I have two vectors on the screen, vector A and vector B. And I'm going to show you a little graphic that walks you through adding it in one way, then adding it in the other way. And the whole point of this exercise is for you to see that at the end, you still get the same result. So here we go. So here is vector A. And I'm adding to it vector B. So the head of vector A goes on the tail of B. And obviously, the result is that dotted line that you're seeing there. So that's the result of A plus B. A first, followed by B. Now I'm taking the B first, and then I'm following that up with the A. All right, so the head of B now goes to the tail of A. And as you can see, the two dotted lines are basically the same. They're running in the same direction, and they have the same magnitude. So the order in which you add two vectors, which is something we kind of talked about before anyway, is what we refer to as, oh, sorry as commutative. I don't know why the video is running again. So the commutative property for addition of vectors holds. Commutative just means the order in which you add two vectors does not change the result. Let's move on. What about if we were to do this? If I were to add three vectors together, there's A and B and C, and you can see the three vectors over here on the screen. What if I added A plus B first and took that result and added it to C? Would that be any different from taking the B plus C, because of course brackets come first, adding the B plus the C first and then adding it to A? Would it make a difference? Well, let's find out. I'm going to go ahead and show another graphic where you're going to see the A vector being added to the B vector. So those two are being added together. And then the result of that is this dotted line. Okay, so that's my A plus B vector. The result is that dotted line. What if I took that dotted line, which is the result, and now added in my C vector? Okay, so now I'm taking the, 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 the A and the B, which is the dotted line, and adding into the C. And what result is, is this other dotted line right here. So that final dotted line that we just put on the screen, that's the A plus B plus C. So I'm gonna put that aside for now. That dotted line that I just put aside is the A plus B first followed by C. I'm gonna clear some space. Then I'm gonna do it the other way. I'm gonna take the B and I'm gonna add the C as you're seeing on the screen. I'm adding those two first. The brackets say I should add those two first. The result of that is that vector. So that dotted line represents the B plus C vectors added together. If I took that B plus C vector now, and I were to add to that my A vector, which is what the correct order is for the second part of this, then what I would get is equivalent to what I had in the first place. Those line up more or less nicely, right? I might be a little bit off in where I place my vectors, but they're pretty much the same. So that shows that result is actually the same. And this is what we call the associative property for the addition of vectors. So whether you associate A plus B first and then add on the C, or you associate B plus C first and then add on the A, the result is actually the same. That's all that is showing you, okay? Let's move on. There are some other vector properties. There is a zero addition property. So the zero vector added to any other vector gives you back the original vector. That makes perfect sense. If I add zero to anything, I'm not changing it. It works the same with vectors. So the zero vector addition property means that you add zero to a vector, it's the same vector. We talked about a zero vector before. That came up in a question that we did recently. The associative law for scalars. So I have a scalar multiplied by a vector. So that's n times a. I take that result and multiply it by m. Turns out if I just multiply those two scalars together first and then multiply it by a, it will be the same thing. Distributive law for scalars also applies. So this is the associative law for scalars. It doesn't matter whether I do the m times the n and then multiply it by the a or the n times the a then multiply it. That's what the associative law is. The distributive law is like what you did for distributive law. If I add two scalars together and multiply it by a vector, 
It's the same as distributing that scalar into the vector. So it will be the same thing as taking m times a plus n times a. Very simple, basic grade nine algebra. So those are, well, those three so far. The fourth one I forgot is this one. Distributive law um, for the addition of vectors. So if I had two vectors added together and multiplied it by a scalar, then it's the same thing as multiplying the scalar into each of these vectors. So k times a and k times b. I'm not going through and sort of demonstrating each one of these like I did for the first two, but I'm just saying that these are vector properties that you're supposed to be familiar with. No. Once you are familiar with those properties, then it's easy for you to do questions like this. Use appropriate vector properties to simplify the following. And it's, <laughs> you might be looking at this and thinking, there must be some trick to it. No, it's exactly what you think. So I have this scalar multiplied by this vector sum and difference, and I'm subtracting this vector sum. So we're going to use that distributive property that we just talked about. I'm going to multiply that four by each of these things inside here. So I'm going to get the four times a, the four times the minus two b, which is minus eight b, and the four times the three c, which is plus c. Then I'm going to multiply each of these by minus one. So I'm going to get minus two a, minus b, and minus five c. Again, this looks just like algebra, which it is. So vector algebra is algebra. And of course, you would expect that I would try to simplify this, put my like terms together. So there it is. The 4a and the minus 2a gives me 2a. The minus 8b and the minus 2a, what am I doing? Sorry, minus 8b and the minus b gives me minus 9b. And the 12c minus 5c gives me plus 7c. There you go. As simple as that. Nothing more to it than that. And then the second example is this. I give you a vector m, which I'm saying is composed of two other vectors. So the vector m is 2a plus 3b, and the vector n is a minus 4b. Use some of those properties to simplify 2m minus n. So remember, I have to take the m and put it in place of this. And it's just a substitution. This n, and substitute it in for that n right there. So using just plain, regular algebraic substitution, it would be 2 times the 2a plus 3b, so 2 times this, minus whatever n is, and n is this thing here. And then if I just use the you know, distribution property, I'd get the 4a, the 6b, the minus a, and the plus 4b. And again, all I have to do now is just simply put like terms together. And here are my like terms. The 4a and the a is a 3a, the 6b and the 4b is 10b. So this is as easy as it is when it comes to vectors. People sometimes are a little bit scared of vectors. And I'll be honest with you, our next class on Wednesday is going to get into three-dimensional vectors. And that can be a little bit, a little bit hard to sort of conceive initially. Even for me, who is not a very good artist, I'm going to have trouble drawing three-dimensional vectors. I'm probably going to have to use a uh, a, a website called GeoGebra to do that. But for the time being, this is as easy as it gets. You should be able to do the homework for today based on what we've just done. And that is it for today, right? It's as simple as that. Uh, unless there are any questions, I'm going to leave it on that note. This is the reason I use Zoom was because I wanted to be able to get that input from you. And to be honest with you, I like doing that in class. So I may do that again in a future session. But um, we'll, we'll leave the Google Meet link there for now. And I'll tell you before Wednesday whether we're going to go back to Google Meet or we're going to switch over to Zoom. The board is really asking us to use Google Meet. But I really, really like Zoom. All right. So that's it. Unless there are any questions, I leave it on that note. There is homework. I hope you're going to, those of you who haven't yet done the exercise that I gave you online, try to get to that at some point. All right. Thanks for showing up, folks. We'll talk again soon. Take care.